There's this one scene in Fast and Furious where Dominic Toretto says, it's not the car, it's the driver. He was driving this shit box of a car. I think that really says a lot on how some things can be cheap and look really, really pointless, but the way you use it matters more than how much it costs or what the quality is. Hi guys, my name is Big DC, you can call me DC, and today we're gonna to be talking about how cheap things aren't necessarily bad. So, I've been an amateur photographer and videographer for over nine years now. I still call myself an amateur even though I get work and jobs for them every now and then. But when I started out, you don't really start out with a lot of money, you know? You tend to buy the cheapest things that will get you from point A to point B. I don't know why, I, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of, I read a lot of forums and reviews on what to get and what not to get, and I still went with the cheapest thing that I can get at the budget that I can get it at. So it teaches you a lot on how some people have the perspective of more expensive is a necessity. It really boils down to what your end goal is, right? And the, what the relative differences are and if it's worth that relative difference. Like for me, I know or I've read and I've learned about all of these expensive gears and expensive things, but if you view it from the lens of a person that knows nothing of these things, they will never find the difference, right? They will never see the difference between a cinema lens and a $50 lens or 50, yeah, $50 lens. They will probably see it when you compare, but if they only see the one thing, they probably will never know what the other thing is. For me, I've been doing that for over the years. For example, I have this lens from Makey. This lens, extremely cheap. It's a 35 millimeter f1.4. It's, I think you can get this for like 5,000. Yeah, I've been I've been shooting with these cheap lenses. This 35 from Makey. I have a 50 here. The Nifty 50 from Canon, which everybody gets. It's the 50 millimeter lens. Honestly, I've been using them for shoots for over nine years now and they're great. Um, another thing is, for example, this wireless lapel that I'm using right now. Some of them go all the way to the 20,000 pesos, 20,000 peso range. This thing cost me 6,000 pesos and it sounds great. I talked about this in another video if you guys want to check that out. This is my ND filter from KNF. It's 1,000 pesos. I wouldn't say the cheapest because you can go really, really cheap with these things. Like, you can go all the way down to 600 pesos, but I, I brought one from a from a brand that I know and um, it's their cheapest ND filter and it gets the job done. It, it really does um, do its best with the cost. These things can go all the way up to like the the, 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 f the tens of thousands, uh, especially ND filters because it's glass that you put on in front of your lens and whatever you put in front of your lens needs to be as good as your lens but who will ever figure out that who will ever point out that ah this guy's using a really cheap ND filter because they see these weird artifacts like nobody will ever point it out unless unless they've had the experience of it is that your target audience is the question it was cheap for its relative price but if you never compare it to something that's expensive nobody will ever figure out that it wasn't expensive it really depends on how you use it and how you present it to your audience, right? Cheap really isn't that bad. Cheap is, uh, is a way for you to get your foot in the door and see what the other doors can get you, right? So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a very short video. I f I, this one I know. I know for sure this is a very short video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to do all of the things down below. If you guys haven't uh, if you want to check the previous video over here and if you guys want to do the thing over here Palam.